Can you tell us about your main product, the Zootech platform? What kind of feature does it have? So the Zootech platform is our central product. All of our other products feed from it or feed into it. Basically, it's a cloud database that we deploy to our customers to help them manage either document workflows or data workflows. Those documents could be design drawings or specifications, and they have to ensure that everyone has the, the same copy and that they've been through certain workflows. Data the same, it could be building data such as defects or progress on site, things like that. It houses it and it reports on it, ensures everyone can see it. The way we deploy it, you know, I often describe it as being similar to Lego in that we give you unlimited Lego pieces and various instructions of how to build it, but really you can build it any way you want. As we all know from being children, Lego rarely ends up looking like it did on the box. So our customers can, can adapt the system to whatever way they want. That flexibility is key to the, the, the core platform. And how do uh, construction companies administrate and handle project data and documents today? There's a few different ways. I'd say the majority around the world use paper, PDF, email, you know, that, that's kind of the standard. Um, and then the next step up is document collaboration tools. So they are literally for managing documents, which are generally PDFs and ensuring that people have the same copy. Now, the problem with just working within documents is that the data is now dead. Really, where we want to get to in a digitized construction is that the data is real. So in all that data that's on a drawing is actually in a database and you can access that bit of data rather than having to go through an entire document to find what you need. How do construction companies administrate and handle project data and the documents today? Well, it's really about efficiency. So uh, it, two different cases around a, a pump, for example. Um, when a pump is installed during construction, it needs to be commissioned and make sure it works properly. So the person who's doing it, you know, what you simply want them to do is be able to scan a, a QR code attached to that and get the data they need, which could be flow rates or electrical power, things like that, and then make sure that it matches what it's meant to do. Um, and then in maintenance, it's the same thing. If a maintenance, maintenance manager arrives to fix a pump or do a service on a pump, scan the QR code, he can find out the date of the last service, who did it, what was done, what parts are required, where he can get them, all in data, rather than having a large PDF or even a book and having to go through it and find that data and also data is changeable. So rather, if you change something, rather than changing the entire document, you can just change that small data set. And then of course, easily searchable, which is, it's a huge thing. Data mining, it's smaller in construction, but it, it's a large part of it that's gonna keep growing. What can you tell us about the competition? Well, believe it or not, our biggest competition is still pen and paper. Um, that's obviously changing very fast that the, the industry is becoming digitized. But there are plenty of other tools out there for different parts of the process. So as I mentioned, there's you know, document management and document collaboration tools. And then there's certain data tools, but they're more for a specific process, such as simply defect management or construction progress, where we would cover the entire thing. So the revenue model consists of software licenses and startup and customization costs. How much is uh, plug and play and how much must be adjusted? So at the moment, 70% uh, of our revenue comes from software licenses and 30% from setup and consultation. The plug and play area is still a smaller percentage. It would make up 20, 25% of our entire revenue. Historically, we've gone after mega projects, which always require consultation, setup, etc. Now, our latest push on our fastest growing area of revenue is that plug and play. You know, we're talking to smaller firms, architectural firms, construction firms, uh, consultant engineer firms, things like that. And they are quite happy to receive one or two web demos, a day's training, even over the web, so we don't even have to see them, and they will use the software as, as, as they like. Um, this is really down to a change in, in people. You know, they're used to having lots of technology in their pocket on their phone and accessing information. So it's not alien to them to use a new app. They, you know, so that is ever changing, ever increasing. And uh, that's really a big part of our, our, our future growth is going to be down to that plug and play. So you sell directly to customers and also through partners in selected markets. Could you briefly tell us about your sales channels? So yes, we, we sell direct in Ireland, UK, Middle East, Australia. Um, we have a partner in Italy who also covers Spain. And really that's just down to language barriers. You know, we don't have the, the language to, to sell in those countries. Um, continental Europe, we will use partners, I would, I would foresee. But North America, Scandinavia, we will direct sell. Now, as our plug and play uh, revenue increases, 
that's obviously going to make direct sale easier. Um, historically, we're a mega project company. We will, of course, keep that network going. When you work on a mega project, it tends to be a small community of people who move from project to project, and we're part of that community. So that will always be part of our sales strategy. Could you tell us a bit about the pricing for your software? Well, it's, it's very simple, really. On, on large projects, it's based as a percentage of the capital value, which is the norm for the construction technology. And on smaller projects or smaller firms, it's on a per user license basis. In your most recent closing financial statements, the operating margin was just over 25%. Is it possible to increase it more without building a more generic platform? It is, of course. You know, what our customers want from us, what they expect from us, is that flexibility. And if we can improve our system to allow them to access that flexibility themselves, that will increase our, you know, our sales, no problem, without having to be a generic platform. We want to build a community where people, you know, a community online, people can view videos, share tips and ideas, things like that, on how to use the, best use the software. And if clients feel an ownership of the software, they're much more likely to stick with it and make it work. So Sutec has been in high growth since 2016, but why is the growth accelerating now? Well, there's a few reasons. One being the global economy, of course, which is, as much as I'd like to say it is, it's completely outside of my control. The, uh, but really, the expectation of people is changing. You know, there's an app for that. that. That's normal for people. So they're looking for construction technology. They want that technology in their workplace, not just in their personal life. So. We have people coming to us now, you know, our digital marketing is, is increasing. People are coming to our website, they're looking for solutions rather than us having to chase them, which I think is a big part of it. And also our concentration on smaller firms and smaller construction projects has increased the quantity of users and the quantity of contracts we have, and they're more plug and play contracts, so they're, we're able to increase our revenue that way. After the project has been completed, you offer solutions for ongoing administration. Can you tell us more about it and how many of the projects do you believe is realistic to convert to this service? Well, at the moment we're, we're converting about 95% of our, our projects into that ongoing hosting. Um, and what really it is, is all of that information that's collected during construction. There's uh, information on how they built, but also the instruction manuals for every part of the building and details on every material used in the building are all held within Zootex. So it's a reference point for the maintenance or the facilities managers of the, of the building. Now, what that really, that what's important about this is that will be required, that information will be required at the demolition of the building. So they will pay hosting of, to have the database for information from the day of handover to the client to the day of demolition. Another part of that is that due diligence in the sale of a building will often look at the service records, warranties, things like that, and this helps speed up the process. And about Sweden then, uh, why have you chosen to list your stock in Sweden? So when the decision was made to raise capital, we looked at various options. Often Irish companies would look towards the aim in London. But with Brexit, you know, we just weren't sure what's going to happen. You know, it would have been outside the EU. So we looked in the EU, um, we saw Sweden, the Nasdaq brand, that's a real stamp of approval. And with our aspirations for North America, you know, that brand is really going to stand to us. Would people see it? They see, you know, that you've been through the rigors of an IPO with Nasdaq, so you're, a, you know, a good company. Also, Sweden, the investors up here, they're very technology savvy, so they understand our product and they understand our market as well. The rights issue adds around 50 million Swedish to the company, but you're already profitable. So why raise the capital? Well, as our financial director often says, the best time to go looking for money is when you have money. And you're right, you know, we've been profitable the last couple of years. We have reserves in the bank and we could fund this expansion ourselves, but it will take too long to get to where we want to go. Um, and really this injection of capital will ensure that we stay ahead of the competition and we don't want them to catch up. Last question then, can you summarize Sutek as a case and why should our viewers invest? Well, really I see there's three reasons. One, the market, you know, digitizing the construction industry. That is, that is happening. That is a big market and there's huge potential there. Two is our product. You know, we obviously have a great product. It's been used on some of the best known projects around the world, from the Shard in London and Wembley Stadium, Doha Airport. You know, it's, it's, it's been proven. We have a great product. And three is the team. We've managed to, with, with no capital injection, we've managed to 
maintain profits and grow the company. So with an injection of capital, we can really take this to the next level.